Hey Wheaton North, Mr. Yergler here. We're going to start working on balancing equations. Okay, this is going to be something that we do all the time um, for a lot of the year. Okay, so let's uh, let's get started with it. This is uh, the, the these are the particle pictures from your your change in mass lab. If you don't have these particle pictures in there, um, this is kind of like your before the reaction on this side, and and here's some particle pictures after the reaction. Um, make sure you have those in your in your lab uh, or something similar to them. All right, now the main idea with the change in mass lab is that mass doesn't change, right? There is no change in mass. There's conservation of mass. Mass might leave our system, like as a gas, but uh, they're still there, right? Um, and we're, we're going to show that with bal balancing equations. Okay, so because the mass of the reactants and the mass of the products are always the same, they're always identical, even if, even if some of those atoms are going off as a gas, the, the mass of the products from the reaction is always the same as the mass of the, of the reactants, right? Because mass can't be created or destroyed. Um, and so we need to show that in our chemical equations that we do in the, in the reaction equations. We have to show that the number of reactant atoms is the same as the number of atoms in the, in the product, okay? Um, and if you look at this, at this example right here, N2 plus H2 produces NH3. This isn't the way it is written now. It's not showing that we have the same number of atoms. Okay, let me show you kind of what I mean. We have one H2 and one N2, right, because there's, there's no coefficient written here. And we have one, H, one NH3. But if you look at this, you, there's two Ns, two nitrogen atoms, in the reactant. But after the reaction, there's only one, right? And this is kind of indicating that that atom is getting destroyed or it's like turning into a hydrogen or something like that, which can't happen, right? So we need to balance our equation by adding coefficients. We need more hydrogens on this side because we have three over here and we did only have two, so I'm going to add a few more. Um, and we need more ammonias over here on the product side because we have two nitrogens on the reactant side, so we need to have two nitrogens on the product side as well. Um, however, when you do that, when we have two NH3s, now we have a total of six hydrogens, right? And so we need to have six hydrogens on the reactant side as well, okay? So what we really have when this reaction takes place is we have three of these with only one of these is producing two of the NH3 molecules, okay? So we're going to show that with coefficients in front of these, in front of these uh, reactants and products on the, in the reaction, right? So you should have, these are your coefficients, three, one, and two. One molecule of N2, three molecules of H2, produce two molecules of NH3, all right? So balancing an equation, the definition of balancing an equation is just adjusting the coefficients in the front of each compound um, to make it so that the atoms on both sides of each element are the same, okay? Uh, let me just kind of show you that again, all right? So we have three, this is our coefficient, three hydrogens, one, uh, three molecules of hydrogen, right? There's two atoms in each molecule. One diatomic molecule of, NA, of N2 producing two molecules of NH3. All right, so let's actually uh, get some practice with this. The best way to learn this is just to, to do it and get a lot of practice with it. So if you don't already have this written in your notes, make sure you have this written. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually do this on paper because it's a lot easier for, you, for me to show you it that way. So here's my unbalanced reaction equation. You should have this written in your notes, okay? So Fe plus H2, uh, Fe2O4, and then H2. Okay, so these are my products, and these are my reactants. Um, leave yourself a lot of space in between because we're going to add coefficients in here, and uh, it, it just is a lot neater if you leave yourself some space, all right? All right, so let's take a look. At, we basically want to start by finding something that's not balanced. Um, let's see. Iron looks like it's not balanced, right? And you could start with any of them. Um, but let's start with iron. We have three irons right here, and we only have one iron over here. And I'm going to actually draw those. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to, uh, to do this. So uh, some people like to just list them out. I like to, um, I think it's faster to just kind of write them. Fe and then O4, right? This is a molecule. When we're balancing equations, we can only add them we can only add more molecules. We can't just throw in an extra iron in there, all right? Because these are always come uh, in a three to four ratio, all right? There's all, in this molecule, there's always three irons with uh, four oxygen. So I'm gonna draw them as like a single unit there. Um, and then my H2, we can draw it like this. And if you wanna just put a circle around it, or if, um, 
or a box, either way, right? So this is kind of like how many of each we have. So we have three irons right here. Um, so let's add more irons over here. Now these are individual atoms, right? This, this isn't like a molecule, it's not F3. So I can add individual irons on this one, all right? So maybe I should uh, show these as individual atoms, all right? All right, so now iron is balanced. We have the same number of irons on both sides. Let's look at something else. Let's balance something else. H, we already have two on both sides, so that's good. Uh, let's look at oxygen. One oxygen here, but four of them here. So we're going to need more oxygens on this side. So we can't just add more oxygens by themselves. We have to add them as molecules because we have molecules of, of water, uh, H2O. Okay. So now we have four molecules of, of water, um, giving us a total of four oxygens, which matches up with, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Four oxygens on both sides. Now, you need, at this point, you need to double check all, all your uh, compounds again, or all your elements, because, because we've added more waters, we now have more hydrogens, right? We have two, four, six, eight, and only two over here. So we're going to need to make it so we have eight over here total. Um, so I'm going to draw in a few more. I'm going to just circle it. It's a little faster to circle it. Okay, so two, four, six, eight hydrogens. Two, four, six, eight hydrogens. Four oxygens, four oxygens. Three irons, three irons, right? It's balanced. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and add in my coefficients. We have four of these molecules, right? There's eight hydrogens, but there's four molecules of H2. We only have one of these, and we have four waters, and we have three irons. Done. Let's move on to the next one. Go ahead and copy this down if you don't already, already have it. Um, this one's a little simpler because there's only one, uh, this is a synthesis reaction, there's only one um, product. Let's do the same thing again. Fe, two Fe's, three O's, right, in one molecule. O in one molecule, or two O's in one molecule, and Fe is by itself, right? Let's see. Um, so I'm seeing here that oxygen is, there's two on this side and three on this side, but we have to add these in pairs. So that's going to be kind of difficult because this is odd and this is even. So let's come back to oxygen. Let's look at um, let's look at the easier. Let's do the easier one first. Iron, there's two irons. Let's add another iron here. Sometimes if you leave the harder ones for last, then they, they kind of actually get easier as you add other molecules. Um, all right, so now iron's balanced. Now we need to uh, balance out our oxygens. We're going to need more over here. So let's add at least one more molecule here. Now we have four oxygens, right? Two, four, but only three here. We're going to need more over here, so let's add another molecule of Fe2O3. Okay. Um, three, six oxygens. Two, four, we need two more of them, right? Six oxygens. So now we have six oxygens on both sides. We have one, two, three, four irons, so we, we're going to need more irons over here. Like so, okay? Um, and maybe I should draw a line to kind of keep this separate. So then now we can write in our coefficients. We have two molecules of Fe2O3. We have three molecules of O2, and we have four atoms. Not, they're not really molecules of, of iron. And now the reaction is balanced. We have the same number of atoms on both sides of each element. Let's do one more. Okay, this one is a little trickier, um, and we'll get more practice on this. But uh, instead of drawing the pictures, I'm going to show you a different method. So if you like the pictures, if you like drawing the pictures, then you should do that. Um, I'm going to show you what I call the table method. I think it's a little more efficient, and I like it, med I like it better. Um, it's a little less tedious, but um, again, the whole point is to do this correctly. So if the pictures make sense to you, then do the pictures. I'm going to do reactants and products, okay? So I guess I probably should draw it underneath the arrow, but that's all right. And then I'm going to list out the different elements that we have. We have potassium, we have phosphorus, we have oxygen, magnesium, there's a lot of them on this one, and, and chlorine, right? All right, so let's count up how many we have on each side. Three on the, on the reactant side, right? One on the product side. Phosphorus, we have one here, and here we have two because we have two phosphates, right? two polyatomic ions of phosphate. So we actually have two on the product side. 
oxygen, we have four oxygens on this side. And we have, let's see, two PO4s. So that would mean we actually have eight oxygens. Magnesium, one and three on this side. Chlorine, two on this side. And one chlorine over here on the product side. All right, now we can see that um, some of these are not balanced, right? Um, I'm just gonna pick the easy one. I'll just do the first one, right? We have K3 and we have K over here. So let's put a, let's put a three in front of the KCl. That changes the amount of, chlor of uh, p potassiums we have. We now have three potassiums. It also changes the number of chlorines we have. We now have three chlorines. Let's find something else that's not balanced, phosphorus. Phosphorus, we have two over here and we have only one over here. Remember, we can only add coefficients. We can't put uh, parentheses around this and add more, um, more polytomics because the, the, the charges have to stay balanced, okay? So we're only gonna add a coefficient. So now we have two phosphoruses and two phosphorus on, on that side. However, we've changed a lot of other things too here, right? We've changed the number of potassiums. We now have six potassiums because we have two K3s. So six potassiums. Two phosphoruses, that's right. And now we have eight oxygens, right? Two K3PO4s would be a total of eight oxygens. And that actually helps us because now oxygen is automatically balanced as well. Let's, we'll come back to potassium. Let's look at magnesium. We have three here. We're gonna need a three coefficient of three here, right? And notice that I'm only adding coefficients. I'm not changing any of the subscripts. And then now we've, we've also changed chlorine, right? Three uh, times two chlorines would be a total of six chlorines. Now we need to change, uh, we need to balance chlorine. We have six over here. We are gonna need to change this from three to six. And that's fine to just cross it out and write a six, that's fine. Or if, you have, if you're using pencil, it may be better to erase. Now chlorine is six, and we've also changed potassium. And this should always work out this way, where your last one kind of falls into place, right? Now we have six on, potassiums on both sides. Everything is balanced, okay? So our coefficients end up being two, three, one. This is an assumed one, and six. All right, we'll get a lot more practice with this, so don't worry if you're confused. Pick the method that works best for you. I like this. A lot of people like drawing the pictures because it may kind of helps them visualize what's going on. Um, but whatever method works for you, eventually you'll get to the point where some of the easier ones, you can just kind of look at it and know what coefficients to put in, and that's fine. You just always want to double check your work. All right, this is Mr. Yergler signing out.